Hello and welcome to another weekly update. Trust you had a good Easter. Um, I'm going to start and finish this update with warnings. So the very first is a warning um, around the bot framework and specifically the bot framework state service. So um, from the offset and from the outset, the bot framework had uh, a state service you could use to store small amounts of data um, about users. Um, you could kind of pick up uh, and persist it over time uh, so that uh, you could offer users a nice kind of ongoing experience. That's That service, the state service, um, is being deprecated. It was first talked about back in uh, December. The deprecation was sort of announced and it's a forced de deprecation. So it's not going to just keep running, um, it is going to stop and it's going to stop quite quickly. So if you are using it in production um, to do things and, and to store state, you need to take action today uh, if you want to stop your things from not working. Um, you've got around about a week before things start to go wrong. There's a gradual demise pro program that happens. So for 15 days from April 15th, so that is next week sometime. Uh, yep, so next Sunday, so from April 15th uh, through to the April 30th, um, things on the state service are gonna take longer to execute. So what they're gonna do is gradually make the service slower and slower to use up to kind of half a second each time. So you're gonna notice that if you're still using the state service, you're gonna notice it get slower over time and your users are going to notice that your application gets slower over time. So if you are not watching this um, ahead of time, and it might be that the first you know about this is your users complaining that your service is getting slower. Um, I hope not because I hope you see this before then and have a chance to do something about it. From April 30th um, until the 20th of May, so just under a month, um, there are going to be scheduled brownouts. So at the top of each hour, there's gonna be a, per a period of time when the service just doesn't work. That's gonna start off at quite a small window of five minutes and it's gradually gonna get longer until it's 30 minutes and it won't work during that time. Okay, so that is gonna be your users reporting that sometimes your application just doesn't work at all. Um, and so I'm really hoping that you'll have fixed things before then. And then from May the 21st onwards, all write operations will be blocked. You can continue to do read operations, um, but you will not be able to write any new data. You'll only be able to do read operations until the 31st of July. And the idea there is to just give you a chance to migrate over any data that's still there. From the 31st of July, nothing will work. So you have a window now um, that is really quite small and if you don't manage to do something in the next week or so then your users are going to be impacted so if you are still using the state service i would recommend you do something about it today looking at the blog post um, what's funny and interesting is that during the scheduled brownouts uh, any calls that you make during that brownout period are going to return http 418 uh, now, if you don't know it, HTTP 418 is the I'm a teapot status. And uh, it was originally done as an April Fool's joke um, way back when HTTP codes were being done. Um, and you can go and look it up on Wikipedia. Um, it's got its own uh, listings. You know, it's an official uh, RFC listing, 418. Um, it's got an RFC number, RFC 2324. Um, yeah, so um, it, it shows up sometimes in Easter eggs, it shows up sometimes um, in April Fool's jokes. It's been around, it was first created on the 1st of April 1998, which shows you how old it is. Um, and um, yeah, it's funny because even back in 1998, the whole, if you read the abstract of the RFC, and it's only a couple of paragraphs long, it's not like a massive RFC like they often are. Uh, it talks about coffee and it talks about kind of coffee pots being connected to the network uh, for making you know coffee automated and auto internet toasters and all these kind of things and it's really weird and funny that that was uh, 20 years ago and actually now we're doing that with you know IOT devices 
um, and all these kind of other things. So, yeah, interesting to see how you know technology follows, um, you know, mocks itself, and and then actually these things become real anyway. So that's that's the first warning. Bot framework state service is going away, so make sure you are not caught out by that. Okay, let's talk about something more interesting and more fun, um, and certainly more useful. And that is a GitHub uh, repo that James Mann has done. So James is uh, an excellent um, bot framework uh, bot framework guy and MVP. Um, also does you know lots in AI space, uh, lots of Lewis and stuff like that. And he's put together this events dialogue package, which is um, it's really cool. He's, it's done as a template for Microsoft Bot Framework, um, and it's designed to make it really easy for you to write bots. Um, to query um, like meetup things like meetup so event um, APIs and stuff so organizers of uh, meetup groups and user groups can take this uh, and implement it very easily uh, and very quickly make a bot for their meetup group that does the answers things like you know when's when's the next meetup uh, what's happening in you know the next month and will also handle the registration as well um, which is really nice um, yeah, it's, it's, so it's both discovery and registration. James goes into loads of detail uh, in the GitHub page. Um, it's as it's coded, it's coded in for Meetup, so it requires a API key for Meetup. You can also use your own uh, if you if you've got your own event system or a different event system, you can use that as well. Uh, James put in a fake service that you can use um, as well, so that you can code around. And also, what's really nice is it's also in NuGet as a package so makes it really really easy to get started with so uh, that's definitely uh, definitely worth checking out um, and uh, thanks James for that that's, that's really cool it's really useful okay um, what else is happening so um, the Visual Studio team are making Visual Studio open faster which is great uh, it's weird it's one of those there's probably a one of those laws a law about it if there isn't there should be perhaps it could be called Morgan's law I don't know um, we seem to spend the same amount of time waiting for computers that we ever did. You know, that computers are getting much faster and much smarter, but the things they're doing are also getting smarter and faster. So the amount of time that we have to wait for them to get stuff done seems to be a constant. Um, anyway, the Visual Studio team are trying to tackle that, and specifically they're trying to make large solutions load faster. Um, I'm adding this in here because it is of interest to developers everywhere. Um, Opening solutions is a is a pain, especially when it takes a long time, um, and large solutions do take a long time. With versions uh, fifteen point six, um, solutions are well, sorry projects within a solution will now load in parallel. Um, so that is going to make them much faster to load, which is very interesting. Um, so parallel project load is coming, but also the actual act of um, loading a solution and project is getting uh, better apparently it's getting leaner so um, solution loading is going to be much faster in 15.6 um, but the the team are not done um, they've got some other plans as well that they're going to go into the future um, so that's exciting they also call out which is interesting and worth remembering actually around things like extensions which can slow down so they've put a lot of effort in the IDE to pointing out and directing you and signposting you to extensions and things that may be slowing down your solution loads as well. So um, if you do have problems with large solutions, keep an eye out for 15.6. Um, but anyway, it's worth just going back and reviewing your extension, extensions because even you know a half second a second, um, you know that three or four times a day, every single working day, it soon adds up. Okay, and the only other thing uh, I want to talk about and just mention, it's not really developer focused, it's kind of IT focused, but it does, um, it's certainly gonna affect you if you um, if you rely on it. Um, and that is that Microsoft are end of life thing, uh, third party PSTN audio conferencing, so ACP for Skype for Business Online. And that will stop working on April the 1st, 2019. So a year from now. Um, so if you're IT pro, or if you're even if you're not, it's worth finding your nearest Skype for Business IT pro and reminding them um, they have a year to do something about that. Um, and then um, 
there's a couple of different things options. I'm going to put a link to a blog post by Tom Arbuthnot, um, fellow Microsoft, uh, fellow Modalityite and Microsoft MVP, um, who goes through some different paths uh, that Microsoft have suggested and talks about, and then goes into a bit more detail. Um, but that's the headline: uh, end of life for um, PSTN ACP uh, for Skype friends online is April the first, 2019. Okay, that's everything for me this week. Uh, thanks very much for listening and or watching and speak to you again next week.